Thank you, Mr. Chair, for such a wonderful introduction. Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, members of the university, new graduates, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to speak today at this convocation ceremony of the university. Graduation ceremonies are one of the most important occasions in the life of a university. The time when we celebrate the achievements of the new graduates. So the first and the most important thing I want to say is congratulations to all our students who have graduated here today. Congratulations to you all. It takes a lot of work to do well studying for a degree. You should be proud of yourselves. You will have worked hard for this day. And from this day on, and for the rest of your lives, you will be graduates of this university. As you have already done, we should think of those who have helped you to get here, your parents, your relatives, your partners, your children, your friends, all your supporters. They will have helped in many different ways. And they are also proud of what you have achieved. You should thank them for that. And thank the university too, your professors, your teachers, those who have helped in the classes, those who keep the university running, who look after the buildings, the facilities, in fact, everyone who works here. They have all contributed in their own different ways to you being here today. And we are all proud of your achievements and of who you have become during your time here. The university will want to support you as you start out on your career and to link up with you after you've graduated. You will be part of this university for the rest of your lives. It may be a poignant time for some of you. Some of you will be leaving your colleagues, your friends that you have made here. It's a time of change, a time of transition, perhaps of nostalgia, even some sadness but you are about to embark on a new phase of your life, one that will be exciting, full of possibilities. And wherever you go, whatever you do, remember what you have learnt here. You will have been taught how to think, how to think critically, to value freedom of expression, to challenge ideas and opinions. Robert Hutchins of Chicago University summed all of this up well when he said, education is not to reform students or to amuse them or even to make them expert technicians. It is to inflame their intellects, to teach them to think. You will have learnt from your studies the importance of accuracy, honesty, and consistency in your work, the need to pursue truth wherever it may lead, however uncomfortable that sometimes can be. And that has never been more important than now. In these days of post-truth, where the arguments of experts can be derided and replaced by unsubstantiated soundbites, by those who seek to influence public opinion without either the arguments or the evidence or the intellectual capability to do so. We see many leaders in the world doing exactly that. 
but you will have been shown the importance of thinking differently, of being skeptical, especially about your own ideas and your own opinions. You will have discovered how intellectual activity thrives on the permeability of ideas and of people, how it flourishes in environments that pool intelligence, that minimize barriers, that are open to free exchange and collaboration, that are tolerant of others and the diversity of their ideas. Openness, permeability, tolerance, education, generation of knowledge are all crucial for an effective and productive society and are increasingly needed to guide us through our uncertain times. I've seen the importance of this in recent years when I have visited Ukraine at the invitation of President Zelensky. He asked me to become an ambassador for Ukraine for education and science. I visited schools destroyed by artillery, buildings reduced to rubble, all mixed up with children's desks, shattered computers, whiteboards, and most poignant of all, children's artwork jumbled up with the remains of shattered classrooms. This is the barbarism of war, the opposite of what you have learnt from your education here. That is the central role that the generation and transmission of knowledge plays for our civilization here and in the rest of the world. But to return to you, the new graduates, as a convocation speaker, I'm expected to offer some general good advice to new graduates. It is a challenge I find daunting because I'm always reminded of what Oscar Wilde thought about advice. He said, the only thing to do with good advice is pass it on. It's never of any use to oneself. Typical Oscar Wilde. But despite his warning, I will go on and say a few things. Firstly, I recommend that you keep your curiosity. Curiosity is a feature of youth, but it can diminish as you get older. Resist this. Remain curious. The world is a wonderful place. It is endlessly interesting. It will enchant you all your life should you remain interested in it. The historian George Trevelyan identified the appetite for knowledge as a central urge of the civilized world. He said, disinterested intellectual curiosity is the lifeblood of real civilization. Secondly, be an enthusiast, embrace causes, Pursue your interests, care about the world, care about the people in it. When necessary, be passionate about these things. Keep a sense of urgency. Do not let grass grow under your feet. Remember the first century Latin poet Horace, carpe diem, while we are talking, time is fleeing, seas the day. Thirdly, keep a sense of humor. There is a danger while you're busy being intensely curious, enthusiastic, and passionate that you might begin to take yourself perhaps a little too seriously. The best way to counter the risk of pomposity is to remember to laugh especially at yourself. And one of the best antidotes to the downs in life, and I'm afraid you will have downs, is humor. A day without laughter is a day wasted. These are my three pieces of advice for you. But I want to end with one more. 
The great British scientist Max Perutz, after making a speech rather like this one, said one final word, never follow the advice of your elders. New graduates, this is your day. Congratulations on what you have achieved. Good luck in your futures, and thank you for listening to me. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.